Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So have you been looking for a very small form factor PC that you can carry either from room to room very easily, possibly throw it in a backpack without much of an issue, take it with you, land party it up a little bit, but you want something that's upgradable and doesn't cost a fortune? Well good, that's what we're gonna be talking about here today in this video. I think I found a solution that bridges the gap between the extremely expensive, super niche things like the uh, Intel Nook that they have or like a Zotac Z-Box basically starting off at $1,500 and that's for bare bones or having to go with a much larger machine, which to me that's too much of a compromise if portability is what you're looking for or you just want something small that doesn't take up a lot of space in, on your desk or in your room. Maybe you have four or five PCs and you kind of just want to stack them up. Having giant desktop towers, that's kind of annoying. So here today, I think I got a solution for those particular problems. But first, in need of a Windows 10 key for your new PC build? Well, you're in luck. Today's sponsor is CDK Deals and they have a deal for you. CDK Deals is a site that offers excellent deals on games and software. And of course, they offer Windows 10 Pro OEM keys at a ridiculously good price. Just find the best deal and go ahead and pop in my promo code GOG20 to apply an additional 20% off. You can check out securely via credit card or PayPal. And once done, you will go ahead and get direct access to your key via the website as well as in your email. Once you have your key, all you have to do is type in activate in your search bar, go ahead and pop the key in, and poof, you're up and running. To take advantage of this excellent offer, all you have to do is click the link in the description and pin comment down below. Make sure to apply GOG20 to get that additional 20% off. Alrighty, so after many years of searching for the perfect mini ITX case that's portable, it's light, it's not that big, not expensive, I'm able to upgrade the parts, I think this case from Gootsroy, I might be butchering that. I'll show you guys a picture of what they say on there. Uh, it's the AO2 model case. It's a mini ITX case, which you're probably thinking, what's the big deal? They're all pretty small. Well, no, most ITX cases are actually rather large. For me, I'm looking for something small enough to fit inside of a backpack, something very tiny, and this does fit the bill. So this case right here, compared to the Xbox One S, I was about to say Series S, this is a one S. Regardless, when you sit it right on top, you can see that it is a little bit taller, but it's not as wide, not as deep, which means that this case overall is probably pretty similar in volume to that of the Xbox One S, to give you guys kind of a mental picture of how big this is. Now, there are some compromises to make this case this small, and be as upgradable as it is. So the first thing we'll tackle is the upgradability. It uses standard ITX motherboards. Nothing super crazy there. The other thing that I like is you can upgrade the power supply. The power supply is built in, much like the Xbox One S. So there's no external power brick here. You actually have a power supply inside of it, and you can upgrade all the way up to 350 watts of flex ATX power supply. I know, that's a little bit weird, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. So you can upgrade the power supply, obviously you can upgrade the motherboard, and it has dual low profile slots. So that means you can upgrade your graphics card as well. So yes, we can fit in a real discrete graphics card in a system this size. And this is just using over the counter, off the shelf parts, nothing super crazy, and you just slap it in there and you're good to go. There's no crazy assembly to make this thing all fit together. You just slap it in like building a regular PC case. So that's really the key here to getting something this size is the low profile graphics card. And that's the reason why it's taken me a little while to get this video done. GPU prices have gone ridiculous. So I'm not spending $400 on entry level graphics cards. I'm not gonna do it, I'm just not. But thanks to David from David Does Tech Stuff, the YouTube channel, links are in the description below. He went ahead and sent me over the fastest low profile graphics card on the market here today, which is the GeForce GTX 1650 with GDDR6. Now while this isn't the most powerful graphics card in the world, it is leagues beyond any APU on the market. So like I said, this is kind of a compromise between going with a full on desktop, which is just the pain in the butt to lug around, or going with something like the Intel NUC, which costs a fortune, which comes with something like an RTX 2060 laptop edition, 
which isn't going to be a whole lot faster. We might be looking at 25 to 30% slower than that at a significantly lower price. Under real normal conditions, this is a $160 graphics card, and this is a $70 case. And then this leads us over to the power supply, which I was able to pick up for $60. Uh, so this is a Flex ATX power supply. It looks almost like a little server power supply. It's very, very small, very compact, but this is much easier for a portable machine than an external power brick because with that, you need to obviously unplug the power brick, unplug it, take it with you, wrap it up, all that kind of stuff. This, you can just leave everything in one spot using a standard PC power plug and just take an extra power plug with you and then poof, you're up and ready to go. So... I really like this type of setup in this case for that. Now, Flex ATX does have its limits. Right now, 350 watts seems to be the highest end model that they have. That's 350 watt, uh, 80 plus gold. Those are about $140. Like I said, I was able to get this one at 300 watts. This is 80 plus bronze. This is about $60. This makes a whole lot more sense. Now, in this case, that's all you're really going to need because you're not going to be able to put a GPU in here that's going to require external power. So we're looking at 75 watts on the GPU. And then in a case this size, you're really going to want a 65 watt TDP CPU. Now, on the upside, with all of the great CPUs and options that we have going on now, getting a powerful 65 watt CPU is not an issue. So for this build, I just got the motherboard in. I decided to go with the H510 ITX AC from ASRock. And then I decided to go with the 11400 brand new Rocket Lake CPU. So this way we can also test out those Z graphics here in the future. You could also go with something like the Ryzen 3700X. I was debating on that as well. Or you can cheap out and go with something like the 10100, which was my original plan for this build. Right now, Intel offers the best CPUs between the one and $300 price point. I'm just gonna be honest with you. AMD, they're winning, they're doing real good, but their budget CPUs are not that great. That's why I decided to go with Intel. The 11400F looks really interesting, has the graphics that we can go with, but honestly, for a GPU like this, the 10100 for 100 to $120, that CPU is more than enough to fully power this. So if you don't need any other CPU power beyond gaming, I would say go with that, but any 65 watt CPU will work. But this is the way that I decided to go. I'm still waiting for the 11400 to come in. That's why this isn't a full-on video. But this video is taking a little while going over all the parts. So I wanted to break this up into a few different videos for you guys. I'm super interested to see how this all pans out. Little computers like this typically demand a massive premium. That's why I kept going over the prices for you. Uh, you can get yourself a cheap ITX motherboard. Power supply, very reasonably priced. The case itself, very reasonable. The other cases I've seen about this size, maybe you can fit in those like ITX cards. Maybe they're full height, but ITX. They're very complicated to put together and they're very expensive. They're usually like $180 to $200 or possibly even more because they're very niche cases. This is only a $70 case. Links in the description below. You can check it out for yourself. They're available just straight off of Amazon. The only real caveat is you do need a low profile graphics card. And honestly, to me, this is one of the reasons why when I see like Ampere come out where we see no performance per watt increase at all over Turing, not really anyway, that's a problem. So whenever you hear somebody complaining about performance per watt, not really going up from generation to generation, this is why. When you can't go beyond certain power limits, that's why people like me really want to see performance per watt increase over pretty much anything else. You can't always get that, so that's not too big of a deal. Personally, I'm really interested to see what AMD can do with Navi 24, maybe even Navi 23. I don't know if they'll be able to hit 75 watts on that. Navi 24 sounds like it's gonna be the power efficient chip, the super power efficient chip. So we'll, we'll likely see a low profile version of that. Hopefully it still keeps some infinity cache, so this way it gets the benefits from the lower uh, you know, bus width. We'll have to wait and see. I don't see NVIDIA really being able to put out anything too much faster than a 1650. Even a 1650 Super might be a bit of a stretch. Like I said, Ampere performance per watt just really isn't much, if any, better than Turing. So I just don't think that they're going to be able to do that. But in something like this, in this tiny little machine with a limited graphics card with limited power, this is really where DLSS could make a big difference. So if they do come out with, let's say, a... GTX or an RTX uh, 3050 or maybe even like a 30, 
40, 30, 30, maybe. I don't know what they'd call it. But if they come out with an RTX card, low profile, even if it's basically the same performance as the 1650, I'd be very interested to check that out as well, as DLSS might allow for those higher resolutions on such a small profile card. So that's another really big reason why DLSS is a big deal. Hopefully AMD gets on their super resolution. We'll see. And then maybe Navi 24 or like I said, low end uh, Navi 23 might work as well. Now, if you guys are interested in this type of content, these unique builds, this kind of like interesting way of doing things, please let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, basically, in, an RTX 3090 is almost the same size as this entire machine. It's pretty hilarious. And this is actually a lot cheaper too, by the way, which is awesome. But I find that kind of funny. But do you guys like that type of content? Let me know in the comment section below. Performance and numbers and all that stuff. We'll have that next week once the 11400 comes in. And then after that, we'll check out the Z graphics and see how much better those are than the UHD graphics that I checked out a couple of weeks ago. So those are the videos that are coming up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really helps out. If you like videos like this and you want to help support the channel, keep this type of stuff going, please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. Links are in the description below. You get to talk with me directly, give me some feedback and ideas and stuff. And I really do appreciate all you guys and your help out there. But that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I'll catch you all in the next video.